This is Chris the Idaho Painter here on Paint Life TV. Today, I got a cool project in front of me. It's a small little shed. We're gonna try to paint this shed in about two hours. So I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks. Painting something like this, I'm gonna be using a solid color stain, making it look new, brand new. So stay tuned for this video. All right, so I'm gonna get ready to start. So I'm gonna be using an airless sprayer. You don't have to do an airless sprayer. This is just gonna make the process a lot faster. It's gonna get the paint or paint or stain on a lot quicker so you can back brush it. I'm gonna be doing three colors. I got a little bit of prepping to do. I've already power washed the thing the day before. It's all dry, ready to go, but I got some masking of the doorknob and some hinges to do in a little vent. And then we're gonna be again spraying and back brushing. This is a rough, um, rough wood, like a T111 sided uh, structure. So it's very rough. So it's extremely important if you're spraying it to back brush it or back roll it and that's going to penetrate a lot better it's going to cause a lot better penetration and adhesion with your stain now a solid color stain versus a semi-transparent stain a solid color stain is going to last significantly longer before it needs to be restained this thing gets a lot of snow built up on it this is up in the mountains and i don't want to have to have come back and stain this thing every two to three years i want it to last like five to six years and a solid color stain is going to give you that durability so we're going to be using a product from sure whims called woodscapes and we're using three different colors of solid color stain i'm going to be just spraying this on low pressure back brushing it with a like a five inch um, block staining brush from premier and um, i'll be masking with some frog, frog tape so i don't get any bleeding on my hinges and my vent so let's go and get this prepping done so we can start the staining process Now there's a few items on this, this shed here that we don't want to get stain on. And so I'm going to mask off. I got blue frog tape on this thing. I'm going to shield some things and then I'm going to mask some other things. I've got a um, little doorknob right here. We want to mask this thing off right here. And then we're going to uh, mask off these hinges so we don't get any overspray on these hinges or any stain on the hinges. So this frog tape, this is going to keep any bleeding from happening. It's got a polymer that swells up that uh, stops paint from bleeding underneath it. So I'm going to wrap some tape around this. I'm also going to, I got to leave this doorknob just like this mask off. I won't put any paper on that because I got to use it to get um, open and close the doorknob. But I've got some hinges. I'm just going to mask off these hinges because I don't want any stain on the hinges so i'll just wrap some tape on these things the best you know i possibly can you can stain the hinges some people just stain right over them i'm trying to see if this tape's going to stick I want to verify I got cabin brown is what I'm staining the color with. So this is our Woodscapes solid color stain. And stains are different than paints because 
stains actually absorb into the wood where a paint creates a film on top of the wood. So it's very important on wood surfaces instead of using a paint to use a solid color stain it's going to perform a lot better raw wood or bare wood likes stain a lot better than paint and it also likes stains better than primer and paint you'll put together you're going to get more durability the surface is going to last longer it's actually going to look even more natural if you want it to look natural and not painted a solid color stain is going to give you that look and it's you're still going to give you the wood grain the texture to the look it's not going to create a thick coating over the top of it eliminating some of that i'm just going to cover my cans back up you want to stir your paints that are boxed up If you don't have a stir stick available, you could just take your prime or intake tube, just stir it with your intake tube. Now this is a very small project, so you know you could use, uh, I got a 515 tip I'll probably be using here. I am gonna be putting bug juice into the paint here, and bug juice, it um, kills flying and crawling insects that land on the paint and it lasts up to five, five, I think it's five to seven years and we've been using it for a lot of years and it's very, very effective. And up here, carpenter ants are really notorious. Mosquitoes are really notorious also. So we wanna put that in there and I wanna stir this up. So I got to my uh, bug juice in there. I do like mechanically stirring it up, that way I get it. Uh, mixed in there really good. I like using these Hyde stir whips from Hyde and they mix paint fast and quickly. So using a stir whip like this, that just ensures it's, the bug juice is just evenly distributed throughout the stain and it also ensures that your box paints are mixed really well. Now I can quickly clean it, just put it in clean water, stir it, and it's clean again. So I did forget one key tool. I'm working up in the mountains, and it never fails. At another job site, I left my cardboard shield holder. So I am going to improvise and make a cardboard shield holder. Sometimes you gotta just do what you gotta do. So you're gonna see that um, here in a minute. So now I'm gonna be spraying uh, this stain on here. I don't need to have very much pressure. I don't want a whole lot of overspray. Uh, I'm not trying to create like a fine finish because I'm gonna be back brushing and back rolling the whole entire thing. Um, so I'm gonna be running my pressure. I'm gonna see how it runs at around 1200 PSI at the gun or at the pump and we'll see how that performs. I just got a 515 high production Titan tip on here. I don't need anything special. Um, an, an HEA tip would be um, you know, ideal for controlling overspray. I'm gonna see how this tip here works first. So that looks pretty good. I can have a little bit more pressure I want to make sure I have enough product coming out that I can back brush. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to be using today just a premier block stainer right here to do my back brushing. And one of the keys about this back brushing, you don't, you don't want to wait long. You want to get onto the back brushing wall it's really saturated and wet still. You don't want it to start to dry out. So this back brushing process is extremely, extremely important. I'm going to be using a respirator. I'm just getting this thing set up here. I think I want, uh, this is really, really dry, uh, extremely porous. I think this tip is probably a little bit uh, small, so I'm going to grab a heavier tip. 
So I'm gonna see what uh, tip selection I brought with me up here. I got a tip saver in here that I store my tips in. It's a great little device for storing tips. I've got, um, I have a 619 and that's what I'm thinking I want to use here. So we're gonna get our 619, put that on there. Cause I just want, I'm gonna turn the pressure down lower, but put out more product. And then I also like to have a bucket of stain to keep my brush in that I can use um, if we're, where I have areas that don't um, need to be sprayed or you don't wanna spray. So you could just hook this thing on to your bucket. So just wait for it to stop dripping, just snap it back quickly, wipe off the edge. And I'm good to go. Now I got a bucket of stain that I can work with also. I'm gonna switch this tip out drop my pressure my pressure is around a thousand psi which is actually not bad an he tip will give you a nice feathered edge too so a feathered edge is a little bit better than a sharper edge that looks way better than that um, high production tip so now i've got a nice feathered edge here i've got a lot more product coming out to back brush Gonna give this a test again here. That's looking pretty good. That's exactly what I wanna see. That's looking pretty nice. Now I wanna make sure I'm spraying. I've got a back brush in between all these laps and then back brush the face too. And I've got um, one more thing, because what I would typically do is shield uh, this top and bottom with a cardboard shield. So I forgot that one of the most important tools that every painter should have when it comes to spraying, and that is a cardboard shield holder. So we're going to make one. Um, Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do, but this will make the spraying process a lot easier. So I'm gonna cut off the seal and make it right about here. And luckily this is a small shed, so I don't need very much. I got a small extension pole with me These little flaps right here, I want these guys to be a little bit stiffer. I don't want them to bend. So let's see if we can put some tape on there, keep them from bending. There, stiff. That worked. This is what you call a mini cardboard shield holder, but I think this is gonna work. Now, I think I'll just tape it onto my extension pole. And being that I got this um, frog tape, high production tape, it sticks really well. I think it's gonna hold this thing on there pretty good. So it looks like it's working. Just make this a little bit stronger. Work longer, be stronger, or be stronger, work longer, I think is how it goes. Tighten it up. Now we have ourselves a cardboard shield holder. I think that's going to work.
So you want to use you know, a good quality stain brush versus a paint brush, a stain brush, you know, because the stains are a lot thinner and a regular paint brush, the stain will have a tendency to drip off of it a lot, lot easier. You could use a four inch roller also on this, but being such a small project, you know, I don't need to dirty up, you know, multiple tools because then I just got to clean up those multiple tools. And I really like um, back brushing versus back rolling. I like the look of, you know, the brush look versus the rolled look. All right, we got this one side all done. Now staining, you only do one coat of staining. You don't wanna put multiple coats on there. If you put multiple coats, you know, it could peel. So we're gonna go around, we'll do the front. We'll show you what it looks like doing the front. Now this bottom down here, eventually, if you don't shield it, it's pretty simple. You can see there's overspray, you know, down there. I can just take a rake when I'm all said and done, and I can just, you know, rake this along here, and you won't even tell there was overspray, you know, down there. So, you know, being a shed, not a house, up against somebody's house, that's going to be totally fine, you know, right there with those rocks and stuff that looks totally fine. These RZ respirators. Best respirators I've ever used. Nice and soft. No, no sweaty silicone. So I could use it to shield right here. So now I don't get overspray up on my... If I was just gonna paint this thing, you know, without a sprayer, what I'd actually do is get a nine inch roller with like a three quarter inch nap or one inch nap and I would roll it with a roller and back brush it with a brush. And I think that would take me probably um, maybe a, an hour and a half to two hours longer to do the shed to do it that way versus spraying and back brushing you're saving quite a bit of time by using a sprayer to apply versus dipping a nap or dipping a brush continually and applying your product. So my trim around the doors is gonna be an accent color, so I'm not worried about the doors right now. I'll, um, I'm gonna hand stain those. Let's show you how I can, you know, quickly get rid of this overspray that 
I got on here. So don't leave it on here for days. If you just take a miracle wipe, just wiped it right off. So you get any overspray, a miracle wipe will take it off fast. I always keep those things close by and handy. Another little handy tip, I've got my you know, masking you know, on this vent right here. If I wait you know, till I'm all done, pull it. If anything bled onto that vent, it's gonna be a lot harder to get it off. If I pull it off now while the stain is wet, I got a miracle wipe and I can just peel it right off. or wipe it right off. So my tape did fairly well. Just a few little spots where it bled through. Well, I can you know, being a shed, it's not that big of a deal, but I can just quickly correct that. So you see one of the, the benefits to using these HEA tips from Titan is you use significantly less pressure. You know, anywhere from 800 to 1,000 PSI or 1,100 PSI, and the droplets are larger, so they don't carry as far, but less pressure, nice, even fan, less overspray, and less overspray. So if you're concerned about overspray, you know, Titan's got you covered with these tips. I'm gonna start off by doing my fascia, the green color, Isle of Pine. So, customer had some leftover from the shed, so I'm gonna shake this up. There's not much to do. The green, just a little bit underneath the front fascia and then the sides. And then the door trim is gonna be a little bit darker than the existing color which now which is cabin brown this again is uh, once a solid color stain I use a different type of paintbrush too, a little bit stiffer, and one I can control a little bit more for doing cut-ins because I got to cut in underneath that metal. So I want a little bit more control. So I'm gonna think I'm gonna use either a Premier Montauk or a Premier Riverdale brush. I gotta check and see what I got available in my truck. So I add uh, in my truck had the exact brush I wanted, a Premier Montauk. So this is a good interior, exterior brush that will work really well for this stain. And it's a all paints and stains brush, DuPont bristles, uh, Tynex and Oreo. And it'll be stiff enough for this stain. And it'll clean up really easy at the end of the day also. Oh. So I don't need a roller, I'm just going to be brushing. So I don't need a bucket screen in there either. Because this is so rough, it's not going to be very easy getting it down in the grain. So you're just going to have to keep working it back and forth, back and forth to get it down in there.
You don't want to have too much because you don't want to drip it everywhere. That's getting pretty good right there. If you can't tell from the video, it's this is a really rough cedar, rough sawn cedar, very similar to all the fencing, people's fences in where I live in Boise. This will make the fascia look a lot thicker right here and just make it look a lot nicer. I wouldn't be able to do this just with a regular stain brush. You need to, you know, a brush like this, like this Montauk to do your cut-ins, just something that's significantly stiffer, um, something that's gonna give you angled sash is the best too. So this is a three inch angled sash brush. I'm just working it up underneath there because if you stand back, you'll be able to see underneath that fascia. Don't get too much stain on your brush at once. Stain is a lot different than pain. It's significantly thinner. You can see I can work it up underneath there. Don't panic if you get a little on your, you know, metal, but also don't leave it there. You want it to look, your final project to look, you know, like a professional did it. So you just, you could wipe it off right away or come back with a miracle wipe when you're done, you know, in an hour or so and wipe it off. But, you know, don't ever leave it on there. Don't. Just take your time, don't get paint on the metal. Let's make this thing look amazing when we're done.
All right, there you have it. We've got about three hours time into our shed. We've done three colors on it now. It looks simply amazing. If I wasn't trying to teach and educate, shoot a video doing this thing, probably could have did it in around two hours. If you got any questions or comments about what I did on this shed, what I used or the tools I used, just leave it down in the comment section below. The tools and accessories I use, I typically put those down in the video description so you can get more information about those items used in the video here. Uh, once again, if you um, haven't subscribed to our channel, subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, that way you get notified every time we come out with a video. And if you like how the shed looks, if you like what you saw in the video, give us a thumbs up, and hopefully we'll see you watching our videos once again next week, out.